So I have a few questions for you. Have you ever rejected somebody based off of their skin tone and maybe some of the stereotypes you heard about that skin tone? Or even on the contrary, have you ever dated or chosen somebody based off of their skin tone and maybe what the media pushed as beautiful or popular at the time? Have you yourself ever been labeled as a certain stereotype, aggressive, because maybe you were a dark-skinned person or stuck up because you were of lighter skin? Colorism is defined as favoritism or privileges shown to those of lighter skin tone versus dark skin tone. Even if you haven't been affected by colorism, colorism is still prevalent and it very much so still exists. So in these videos that you're going to watch, you're going to see experiences from both men and women, both positive and negative when it comes to colorism. So stay tuned. What has your experience been with colorism? Let's just start there. It's definitely been I would say over the course of time, different experiences, both in what was what I received from others and then also in how I perceive myself. So it's kind of like two different things. It's been negative at times. It's been, you know, you're black and you're beautiful at times. Um, I would say it's definitely gotten better, both in how the world sees me um, like women and men, and then also uh, definitely just as I've grown and matured and wisened up, well then definitely how I see myself uh, has gotten better in terms of that as well. It's been a struggle, a constant struggle, because it's always having to defend who you are, mm. which that from a younger child up until now, you know, I've had a battle with myself living in this skin being this complexion because people always assume, well, you're biracial. And I'm like, no, motherfuckers yeah. are black. And it's just like, it's like a constant thing. But as I get older and, you know, I learn who I am and appreciate who I am and love myself more, you know, I'm just like, okay, I'm comfortable with this. This is who I am. Yeah. And yes, I'm black and I'm proud. You can question me all day, but this is who I am. Yeah. What was your experience like? in your childhood, um, in elementary school, middle school, high school, college to now. How did that change? How did that evolve? Um, let's talk about it. So I would say elementary school, I really, I don't really feel like I had just perception, you know, um, well enough to really even um, notice anything. And so I think the positive in that is there wasn't anything flagrant that was coming at me that made me like just force me to see my color. Middle school, high school, and even to a certain degree, uh, college, I ran and just, you know, all, most women, we have a clique, yeah. you know, we have a group of friends. We were all cute in our own way, like we were, you know, the cute girls. But I can definitely say, I was very much aware, even in middle school, that I was like the last one to the be one. noticed. Yeah. And, it, and it hit me because guys always had to be around me, talk to me, hang out with me, and then it'll be like, you cute for a dark skinned girl, or mm -hmm. oh, you yeah. cool for a dark skinned yeah. girl. But it was always for a dark skinned girl. Yeah. But it was rare that somebody met me and was like, okay, you know, I like what I see. Yeah. It was always, okay, let me get to know your personality. And then, oh, you are cute for a dark skinned girl. Mm -hmm. So adding that on for a dark skinned girl was something that I pretty much always heard. Yeah. It's like a backhanded compliment. Yeah. Like I can't just be cute with who I am or my personality. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. So in, in you know, in high school and even in college, you know, I just had, Hairstyles that went against the norm. Like in high school, I had my hair short like this. In college, I had dreads. 
So that that worked against, you know, me being cute as well, right? Because it could be me and it could be some light-skinned girls who have short hair, yeah. but it's perceived differently. Like I'm butch and they're cute. So um, it, it was definitely, it, it was definitely noticed um, from middle school up. When you look at all of my cousins, everybody is different shades. Yeah. But in my immediate, like in our family, it's all, you know, you don't look at one another differently. Like you guys are beautiful no matter what. So when I got to public school and being around other black people, that's when I realized, oh, I'm different. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, okay, well, you think you're better than us. Well, you're not really black. Look at you, look at your hair. Yeah. And so when I go home, I'll be like, Ma, am I am I black? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, girl, shut up. Like, you know how some parents they don't. My parents really weren't the type to just sit you down and be like, okay, so this is what's going on. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Like, so it was just like, okay, so kind of like going out in school and just kind of like I'm like, okay, well, I guess I am this because this is what you say. That made me have insecurities within myself because I felt like I wasn't like I wasn't black enough. So yeah. where do I fit in? Because I don't fit in over here. And I don't fit on, you know, there. Yeah. Once I got to middle school, it got a little bit better because you see, so you see all these different shades. Everybody's hanging out with everybody. And then once I got to high school, uh, I remember I was going to church, and all the girls that went to Harrison Central, they went to that church, and I went to Gulfport High. And I remember they would like sit on the opposite side of the room, and I would sit over here, and they'd be like, "Yeah," and they'd just kicking, and I'm like, "What are they laughing at?" And then uh, one of the girls, she actually approached me and we started to become friends. And she was like, you know what? I thought about you differently because of what they said. You know, yeah. this is what they were saying over here. That's why they would sit so far away from you. And I was like, wow, like, what did I do? She was like, you know, because you're so light skinned. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about those stereotypes. So, what are the stereotypes that you've heard, um, maybe not personally, but you just heard in general about being? dark skin yeah i know some of the things that i can think about is like aggressive right yeah ghetto definitely ghetto i've heard ghetto yeah, i've heard that too i would say yeah aggressive just not really feminine loud loud, loud, loud yeah. right right angry angry yeah. yeah what about for light skin what are some that you've heard bougie weak we can, yeah, that's what some of the guys say. Soft, <laughs> weak, soft, soft, yeah. Soft, yeah. Um, those, are, those are really the main ones, the biggest ones. The weak, bougie, you think you're better. Do you feel like with those stereotypes that people try to label you as those, have you ever heard those personally targeted at you? Like, mm -hmm. oh, you think you're you bougie or you weak or you're aggressive, you're a threat, you're intimidating, you're angry. Did you hear any of those personally? I have. Yeah, for sure. Yes, people always wanted to say like, they really wanted me to be like not American. Like my darkness, my color was cool if it was African, mm. but if it's just American, it's just, it's not as interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> where so you from? With yeah. Right, if I'm from another country, then, then it's cool. My color is dope, right, yeah. but if I'm just, like, where you from? Cali. No, like... Yeah, where you from? Where you from? Like, no. Yeah. Cali. It's yeah. like, um... Do you hear that more from men or women? Men. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Because it's like they want to have this whole, like, um... Fetish Fetishism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, if, if you say that you're from somewhere, quote, unquote, exotic, then it's like... Ooh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's Ooh, interesting. you're from Egypt. Like, it's right. all of a sudden I'm better. Right. Because I'm from a certain place. Right. I've so I, got, I got that a mm -hmm. lot, like people just wanted me to be from somewhere, be somewhere else, else and I got asked that. Did you ever suffer from high or low self-esteem um, growing up into like your adulthood because of your skin tone? Yeah, um, what I can say is so I'm human, right? So at times, I would say overall, did I suffer? No. So the, the general answer would be no, I didn't suffer. Um, but I, I will say every moment, whether I was, you know, at the gym or whether it was me and a bunch of girls and we were walking across the quad in college 
or going to a club, I was very hyper aware that um, in order for me to compete, you know, like in order, and you're not really competing with your friends, but you yeah. want to be seen, seen right? Yeah. If you're in a in the in the midst of a group of women, yeah. you, you want to be seen. And so I was very much aware that, you know, whereas, you know, my homes girl who was, you know, a little bit lighter, had a little bit curly hair, you know what I'm saying? She could, she could wear like cutoffs and a shirt. She could dress down basically. She didn't have to get all glammed up and she was still going to be seen. Yeah. Whereas myself, I understood that in order for me to be seen, like I, I would have to get, to I would have to step it up more. Yeah. I knew it, I understood it, but I wasn't necessarily impacted by it. You know, I, I, was, I guess I was thinking, you know, this is just the, the cost of living in, you know, LA, like being in that Hollywood life. I just, I just kind of accepted it and just kind of stayed true to me, stayed in my lane, stayed true to me, but I understood that that came with or didn't come with certain things. For me, it's all about feeling included in my own community. Yeah, that's for me. So I keep talking about like the constant defend. For me, I just wanted to yeah. feel accepted amongst my own. So when did you notice the switch? So like what age were you when maybe it was higher and I felt accepted, I felt I received from my peers uh, versus maybe when it was lower or was it at the same time, but it was just day to day different? I think it got higher once I got to HBCU, which is really crazy because I'm around all these black people, but it's just, a variety of different black people. You have to think about it too, like during like elementary up until high school too, there's all different kind of things going on. Cause I've suffered from weight issues and then on top of that, my parents getting divorced. So not really knowing who I was, not really loving myself enough either, that plays a part as well. Yeah, right, sure. right. Okay, so when it comes to features, do you feel like, um, you did you ever feel any negative or positive um, maybe comments or vibes based off of um, your skin tone and your features. So like, for example, for me, I am a dark skinned woman, but I wasn't deemed black enough because my lips weren't big. I didn't have a big butt. Got talked about because my hair was like finer than the average dark skinned person. Like mm -hmm. dark skinned people only have one type of hair. Right. Um, and I was like, quote unquote, better than because, oh yeah, you got good hair, but like, what is good hair? Right. Um, and that made me insecure of where, like my curly hair when I was in middle school. So I was like, no, mom, flat iron it. So I don't have to like explain and get talked about. Mm -hmm. So have you ever had those things happen to you? I mean, I have with the hair, and then it goes opposite with the nose. Like, but you got a black nose. <laughs> you got a big old nose. I'm like, God, let me make up your mind what you want to make fun of yeah. today. But where am I? <laughs> I want to see today. Wow. Yeah. But okay. yeah, definitely with the hair. Because it's like, what would they say? It's like, there's no way that you're all black with okay. that hair. Okay. I'm like, can my hair just be hair? And then the same thing for my dad, too, because my dad is darker than me. And he has the same greatest hair as you. And he was telling me, he was like, yeah, you know, I used to get made fun of all the time, too, because of my, my right. way being it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I remember I had a girl sitting behind me in uh, middle school. I'll never forget. I think I was in seventh grade. Um, and I was wearing my hair curly. I don't remember how it was. But I would get relaxers, but the relaxers wouldn't take. <laughs> yeah. So my hair would still be curly if I didn't flat iron it. And she was the same skin complexion, complexion as me, different type of hair. Right. And she acted like she was going to cut my hair off yeah so she grabbed the back of my hair and she put the scissors in and did like a scissor sound mm. and was like oops girl i cut your hair yeah and i turned around and it was like a bit of like frustration but also like sadness on top of like why would you do that like it was just like a lot of yeah. emotions i don't know i can't explain it but it's like you are I guess like jealous of my hair, so like you want to cut it off, or you want to act as if you cut it off to see how I'm going to react, or am I going to fight you next if I do that? Because mm -hmm. um, then I will be living up to that like stereotype of mm -hmm. myself. So, what about for you? You know, I mean, I would say you know my family as a kid, you know, they would say stuff like you know, girl, you was flat in the 
back and you are in the front, a girl you would oh, slap in yeah. front and you are in the back. You know, they would make fun, you know, that I wasn't like developed well. And then it's crazy because now as an adult, it's like, you're getting a little thick now, you're getting, you're getting a little mm-hmm. thick, the hips start to spread too wide and it's like, okay, like, what do you, what do you, what make up your ears? What do you want? <laughs> switch gears to dating and like romantic relationships so let's start off with like were you favored or not favored based off your skin tone when it came to romantic relationships i think i've been favored oh just to even just to like hear me say that because yeah. it, it sucks that that even has to be a thing but yeah. i think it i think it has been favored for sure how was that experience for you um for me it's just like i, I was like i feel like you're trying to say i'm this typical light skin girl so i'm i'm this whole like image in your head of what a light skinned girl is so that's why you picked me kind of put on a pedestal of yeah. like this is what all light skinned girls are like so i'm gonna go after her because. yeah and i don't like it i guess the the direct answer to your question is i was not favored but i would say out of all of the times that i've just been hollered at or been in relationships or anything like that more times than not it's never been it's rare that i could be walking down the street and i'm gonna catch a black man's attention is very rare. And I hesitated because I can catch somebody else's attention. I can, right. I can attend, I can, I, I can way easier, easily get the attention of somebody who's not black than it is, than it is for wow. a black man, way easier. Just in general, my, you know, most of my relationships have been with black men. It's always, even if, even if I met you that night, it's rare that I saw you, you saw me and we connected. It's more so, I was in the same space as you. Oh, right. You felt my energy. You felt my vibe. It was. It was more so. I like something about her. It's not necessarily her you look. Chose me from across the room. Right. It so. wasn't the look. It's more so the energy. What she's saying. How she's moving. Ooh, that's a good point. And then, oh, okay. The, the look is cool too. But the look is never the first. Thing. It was right. Yeah, before right. Yeah. That's a good point. So how has it played out when it came to choosing men? I mean, we all have like a preference or like a, yeah. a natural gravitation yeah. towards a certain look, but I definitely didn't choose. And I would say I'm naturally, in terms of black men, I'm naturally attracted to a darker man, yeah. but darker men that I've dated, right? I can only speak from my experiences, um, are like, we can't both be dark. Like that's, that's yeah. not gonna work. So I get more attention from lighter men. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. I don't have a, I mean, I'm attracted to black men, but as yeah. far as in terms of like shade, yeah, no. So um, kind of going back to stereotypes, we know we talked about stereotypes and how you felt like you were labeled. Have you ever prejudged somebody based off of their skin tone and maybe a stereotype? I don't know that I prejudge any one individual, but if it's like, if I'm in a if I'm in a setting where it's a lot of people who look, you know, more like you, it's like my signals go up. Not that I get defensive. It's not any of that. Um, I think I think it's probably the opposite. I think I become like more outgoing. Mm-hmm. Where the defense mechanisms, you feel like you have to do more. It's really, it it's really weird because I don't necessarily feel like I have to do more because I know, I know I stand out, right? So I know if I come into a circle, I know I'm going to be seen. Not to say, you know, I don't know how that comes off, but it's just, you know, I know people will see me. And it's just like, let me, you know, just be friendly or be, you know, pleasant so that they don't get that stereotype of me. So you are more aware of how they perceive you. So let me be the opposite of the stereotypes. Right, Mm -hmm. right. Right. So it's like whatever you might think Think. about, you know, somebody who's, you know, dark dark skin, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Even like from little stuff, like, you know, like I I have a lot of just like Afrocentric jewelry, right? Like Mm -hmm. the earrings are an example today. Um, People, like people, you could just see a response, like, who is she? I mean, I, don't, I, I can't put words in, in people's mouths, but you see a response. Like, you see a, 
you know, is she a, is she a friendly one? Is she a militant? Is she, oh, you, wow. you just okay. see it. And I think it's that coupled with my skin color. You know, I think it might be, it probably would be perceived differently if you were the same age or something, cause you're a little bit, you're a lot lighter, right? Like you're just, yeah. you know, they just have this, you know, it's, it's either, you know, am I, you know, yeah. from another country or am I this black power, yeah. power to the people, yeah. you know, am I that chick? So, and, 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 and that's, that's really what a stereotype is. It's like, you know, a schema, like they have, they have to label you as such to understand it, right? right. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I remember when I first went natural. I went natural in 2011 and I actually did the big chop. And my dad looked at me and he was like, oh, you Afrocentric now. You, you, uh, yes. in India, I'm uh-huh. going to yes. wrap that head up and sit, yes. you know, under a tree playing the guitar, which I thought was dope. I always wanted to be like, right. yeah, exactly. so for me, that was a compliment, right. but it's also coded in ignorance because right. that's the only thing you could equate right. my short hair and dark skin to what's right. a dark skin person right. that's going to be super earthy and right. heavy. Um, Smoking the whole night. And for me, it was actually a compliment because I, I, feel like I am, I do have like a boho style. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, that's dope. But it was like, for him, because they are older generation, Ooh. it was just like the ignorance coded with it. Like, just because, you know, I'm dark skin, I cut off my hair, all of a sudden I turn into an Afrocentric, hippie, yeah. incense yeah. chick, um, and, which is what he said. Whereas if it was somebody else who did it, would you say the same, same thing? thing. Yeah, and I guess for me, yeah. the reason why um, kind of I'm just like hypersensitive to it is because more times than not, the perceptions that they had in me would essentially like close the door of communication or it would put oh, okay. a wall up in terms of communication. So if I'm this angry black or if, I, if I'm this black militant, well, now I'm going to shy away from you because I don't know how just in case she is. right so it's no longer this oh hey how you doing right you know so now it has to come for me like oh hey how you doing and then they're like oh okay she she cool you know Do you feel the same? so I mean I've definitely I've done that too so when I'm in a room and it's not just light skin like a whole bunch of dark skin people it's just yeah. people of color here I'm like okay let me really be me. Let me tune into this cool, goofy side. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, like, yes. like, yes. 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 like, let me just, yes. and that really is who I am. Cause I have so many right. people that will walk up to me. They're like, you know, you, you, you a whole life thing, girl. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Cool but it's almost girl. like we have to make them feel comfortable. That's yeah. what it's about. That's going to be exactly what I was saying. Like it sucks that we have to, go over and beyond mm-hmm. to right make them feel comfortable right especially within our community right like, yeah because you just okay. know, this, we're supposed it's supposed to be a safe area but when we get all together it's supposed to be safe so right. why is it that we have to do all this extra stuff yeah. i think over time there's definitely been growth um just societal growth yeah you sure. know that one minute you go out of style yeah. one minute you you go you in style but i would even say more so instead of yes yeah, so yes yeah, so there's trends right Mm -hmm. but i think also there's a great like cultural um awareness and appreciation that is beginning to happen right and so i think um you know when i look at younger people like people in their like teens Mm -hmm. 20s they are mentally more just aware yeah. and more accepting yeah, sure. than it was, you when know. We were younger. Right. right. So that, you know, there there's hope in that and there there's beauty in that. There's just a, a cultural appreciation. For sure. It definitely has been a, a melanin shift. For like, sure. It's a lot of black girl magic going right. around and just more inclusivity when it comes to um, TV right. and media. Um, we're not all the way there yet, but we're making strides, right? right? So last question, what is something that you would tell your younger self, especially in that moment of low self-esteem where you needed that affirmation or you didn't see anybody on the TV like you, what would you tell your younger self? I'm going to switch it up just a tad. What I am intentional about is telling younger people. So I'm really talking three through 10, right? Like I'm really big on affirming them in positive ways and so because 
you know, like it or not, you know, I'll see like sisters who come together, one's light skin, one's dark skin, the light skin girl gets all of the, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. You're, you're so eye, pretty. Your eye oh, color, you're they're hazel <laughs> yeah. you know, but you really see just how we as adults, you know, pour in that colorism, yeah. you know, pour that into sure. them. And so, you know, when you said, what do I tell my younger self? I think about all of those kids that I try when I do see them to really say, you know, especially if they've got like a fro, like, oh my gosh, your hair is so mm -hmm. pretty. I try to do atypical compliments. So if it's a light skinned person, I want to compliment them on something that is not mm. what I feel like typical. So I'm not going to say yeah. anything about your hair. Right. I'm not going to say anything about your eye color. I'm not going to say anything about your skin color in that typical way, right? And in black or in darker skinned girls, it's kind of the same thing. Like what people typically say negative about you, like, oh my gosh, your skin is so chocolatey and it's so pretty or, you know, or your hair or... So what I would say to my younger self, I mean, I kind of, I mean, just keep, keep on. Like I pretty much, when I was younger, I mean, I was very much aware. So it, it was just keep on, just keep on doing you. Like, you know, don't be impacted by all of the madness that you see around you eventually they'll catch up and that's kind of what happened right. like eventually eventually, catch up. eventually yeah. the masses will catch up so that's what i would say what about you i would tell my younger self to be bold mm -hmm. be bold and walk in who you are yeah it's good and walk in who you are for sure yeah i think i would tell myself the same thing yeah. like yeah. catch up they will catch up they right. catch up I'm still, still a black man. I'm still world. Right. I'm still a black man, but also my skin has power as well. People of different races, they fear yeah. me just basically. Intimidation. Yeah, it's intimidation. And then when you take that intimidation, you just offer the appearance and you put a mind to it and you truly know how to use your mind, yeah. it's a whole different. Yeah, you're forced to be reckoned with. Right.